Entering into Juma, that's what is the night of Juma. It is the Sultan of the days. Everything has a Sultan. The months they have a Sultan, the prophets they have a Sultan. And the Sultan of the days is Juma. And the Holy Prophet والسلام, and especially the people of the porch, the Halil uh, Sufi, Sufa, they were taking these nights, Thursday nights, very seriously and very holy. And they were especially concentrating and worshipping. Because when the Sultan comes, Everyone rejoices. When the Sultan enters, it's not normal. Everyone becomes extraordinary. Just thinking about that will put you in an extraordinary place. The Sultan is Allah, Mutlak Sultan of everything. But he can grant the Sultanate to whomever he wishes. Everywhere now, where the sun is setting, the animals, the earth, the oceans, the skies, the paradises, they are getting ready for zikr. They're getting ready for the sultan of the days to come. It came, and they would celebrate it with the remembrance of Allah and the salawats of the Holy Prophet, alayhi because Allah and His Prophet, they give salawat. Allah and His angels, they give salawat to the Prophet. So those who are awake and aware of this, they're going to use this night. Whole week they have been running non stop for dunya. They're going to take a pause on this night. They're going to tell their ego, sit outside. Leave me alone, I'm going to be with my Lord. Make this intention and you'll win. The ego is going to say, ah, again, ah, this, ah, that. But we are not here gathering tonight for ego, for dunya. We're gathering tonight to remember Allah and His Prophet, And the blessings and the rahmat and the barakat will rain down because of that. This not this derga. If we are not here, what are we going to do Thursday nights? You and I, we both know what we're going to do. Either we're going to run around for nonsense outside, or we're going to run around for nonsense inside the house. But Allah's command is be in jamaat. By yourself, it may be difficult for you to do, but when you find a jamaat doing it, it will pull you to that. The goodness pulls each other. So we're giving endless shukur to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet and Amashai for giving us this blessing to set aside this night like this and the day that is going to follow, to set it aside, to make it holy because the Sultan is here. When the Sultan is passing, there may be thousands, millions who are there. But don't think he doesn't know who is there and who is not. They will know. And just not being in the presence of the Sultan, it will deprive you of every goodness. So let our bodies be here, but let our hearts be here as well, inshallah. Push everything aside. There's nothing now. Whatever that is going on in your lives or in this world, nothing has any existence right now. Nothing has any importance right now because we are here remembering Allah. This is the most important thing. Hadra, meaning that we are asking for the presence. How are you going to ask for the presence of the holy ones? Don't talk about the presence of Allah. Leave that aside. When you yourselves, you are not present here. This is not a madrasa. This is not a university. This is not a school. This is a derga. 
In the schools, there are hours, there are books. Definitely, there are teachers. But the Nakshabandi Delga, there are no hours, there are no books. And the teacher is a sheikh, not to teach each other. And the book is your heart that you're going to check. It is not the book that is going to be given to you. The first question that is going to be asked when we die is who is your Lord? Don't think angels ask stupid questions, Hasha. Billions will say, Allah, but what is the Lord? The Lord is the one that you worship, the one that you love. So many people by tongue, they say Allah. But in their heart, they worship themselves. They worship this dunya. They worship their ego. They worship their desires. Some, they don't even know what they worship. But it's not Allah. They're doing the movements, going up and down, circling around. But they're not worshipping Allah. If worshipping Allah is just to get to paradise, or worshipping Allah is just so that you don't get into Jahannam, that time even the saints, they say, I want to burn Jannat and Jahannam because nobody is worshipping Allah as he deserves to be worshipped. Nobody can worship him as he deserves to be worshipped, but nobody is doing it with love, with heart, with submission. So the Darga, with the Sohbats, go through this. Look to see. What did you wake up for? Answer. Sincerely, what did you wake up for? To worship? To be a better servant? Or are you waking up to run after this nonsense world? What did you do for the sake of Allah today? Faith is divided into 73 branches. The most important one is what we're about to do. The first, which is to do what? To say, La ilaha illallah. And the last, it is to remove a stone, a branch, an obstacle in the path, in the walk, in the road. And the Ahli Tasawuf, they're saying it's not just physically to remove stones or rocks or branches or things that is in the physical road, but it is to ease believers in their path to reaching Allah. People are thinking Islam and Tasawuf is just filled with rules. Yet when you look in the Quran and Karim, how much is it speaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about rules? And how much is he talking about ahlak, good behavior, adab, a good heart? How much that Prophet is speaking in the Hadith Sharif, speaking about the do's and the don'ts, and how much is he talking about how to be a good human being? How to be a good servant? This is what the Nakshbandi way must concentrate. Where all other ways they finish, their end is our beginning. So who is your Lord? You must look. If you say Allah, but you are not able to control your anger and your stubbornness, You are still worshipping Him. It is not Allah who you worship. That time, your anger, your stubbornness, your arrogance and your jealousy has taken over your heart. That is what you are worshipping, not Allah. So the aim now is to say La to every ilah. Illallah, except for Allah. How are you going to say Illallah except to Allah? How you are going to say La if you're not understanding what the ilahs are. If you say, I don't have an ilah, then why Allah is saying, Prophet is saying, Falamannahu la ilaha illallah. Keep on saying that. And why is the Prophet saying, hidden shirk, it is harder to detect than a black ant on a black rock in the darkest part of the night. 
So this is that kind of a school. This is that kind of a book. And these are that kinds of teachers that is going to teach us to unlock that, to be able to answer when the angel is asking, who is your Lord? Not to have any hidden shirk that is in there, idols that is in our hearts, to understand what they are and to work towards getting rid of them. May Allah accept our intention for the sake of His holy ones, inshallah. May Allah make us strong. May Allah take away all the wrong ones from our hearts and the wrong ones from our jamaat and from this world. May Allah bring down the tyrants. May Allah bring down the tyrants. May Allah bring down the tyrants. May Allah make the correct ones, the good ones, the Ahlil Bayt and the holy ones to rule this world. May Allah bring down the Jaliyat. May Allah raise the Mahdi alayhi salam to come soon, inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you and raise the station of our Shaykh Al-Fatiha.